Are you looking to learn about the AWS cloud and how it's organized? Well, then this video is for you. Please subscribe and hit the bell to be informed of new cloud computing training videos every Wednesday. Hi, my name is Michael Gibbs and I'm the founder and CEO of Go Cloud Architects and we're an organization dedicated towards cloud computing training. So what we're gonna be discussing today are regions, availability zones, local zones, and then edge locations. So let's begin with regions and availability zones. Now a region is gonna be a large geographic area and an availability zone is gonna be a data center inside of that large geographic area. So as you can see in this diagram, we have the big box which represents the region and inside of that region, we've placed several availability zones which obviously have high speed networking back and forth to each other. We're gonna talk about the concept of a local zone and a local zone is something different. What a local zone is really doing is it's bringing the computing power closer to you, the end user. So it's gonna be edge computing. And the reason instead of placing your, your computing powers in the, in the AWS availability zone and the AWS data center, you may be bringing it closer to you is to reduce latency. Now, most applications, it's not gonna matter. But if you're dealing with a financial trading, com a trading application where a nanosecond is a competitive advantage or other latency sensitive applications where even milliseconds make a difference, well then a local zone is a great concept for you. So the local zone is basically a region that reaches out to something called like a point of presence, you, or at least you can think of it as a point of presence. So the way the internet works is in some major cities throughout the world, there's this concept of a point of presence. And a point of presence is a data center where every major internet service provider is, has a connection to, a high-speed connection, and they all connect through some switches and routers inside of the data center. And by doing that, every time uh, when you go to request something on the internet and you leave your internet service provider and need to traverse four internet service providers to get to the destination, that's how they connect to each other through these points of presence. Well, now the local zone is basically saying, hey, you can put your computers inside of one of those points of presence. So basically what'll happen is if you can get, in, if you're one of the lucky people to have a local zone near you, what you could do is you could place your computing power inside of that point of presence. And then basically you would just be able to connect to your applications because your direct connection is probably gonna be going through one of these points of presence as well. So super low latency environments. Now this is not enabled by default. In fact, in order to use a local zone, first you're gonna to have to opt in. And then once you opt in, you're gonna create a subnet and you're, on these subnets, you're gonna basically place your EC2 instances, your, your elastic containers and your, lo, your elastic load balancers. And that's pretty much it for the majority of the local zones. Now there are some local zones that have even greater features. For example, the one in Los Angeles, USA, you can basically run the Windows FSX, the file systems for Windows, file servers for Windows, your elastic map reduce, elastic cache, RDS, and in some cases even dedicated hosts. So, that's realistically speaking what the local zone is. So let's look at this graphically. So you've got this giant region and you've got these uh, availability zones inside of the region. And then the local zone is connected to the region in certain points of presence in certain cities for edge computing, low latency applications. Now let's talk about an edge location. And an edge location, in fact, at the time of this, there's about 217 of them. And it's basically a place where you can access content closer to you. So think, and, and edge locations are used with CloudFront. So think about your typical content delivery network. The way the content delivery works, networks work is they have a high speed backbone between all of the locations spread throughout the world. And they have these locations in places that are closer to the user. So think of, by, think of doing this, let's say I live in Palm Beach or Palm Beach, Florida. My nearest major point of presence is Miami. If the server was in San Francisco, if I were to connect normally, what would ultimately happen is I'd go to Miami and Miami would route my traffic through multiple internet service providers all the way to the location in say San Francisco. That would be the normal environment. But with a content delivery network, I can use the, the network backbone of the content delivery network, which in many cases is gonna be much faster and higher performance than actual internet performance, but it's better than that. These cloud front locations actually cache data, so frequently access data. So let's say I'm in Palm Beach, Florida, and let's say there's someone else that's in West Palm Beach, Florida, and someone else in Port St. Lucie, and we all request the same web page. 
what'll ultimately happen is we'll basically send our request to the internet service provider, which is gonna be all route us through Miami for the most part anyway. And then we're gonna be able to pick up the information from the CloudFront's cache directly without going back to California, assuming the content's already there. So edge locations are used for CloudFront. So to summarize, we've got four different environments. We've got a region, which is a large, availabil a large geographic area. We've got an availability zone, which is a data center inside of that large geographic area. We have a local zone, which basically is a, connect, is a point of presence that's closest to you for which you can house your computing performance in some cities. And then we have edge locations, which is basically where CloudFront is gonna work and distribute content on the AWS network. So now you know about the way the AWS cloud is organized. Please download our free AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate eBook. The link is in the description below. And please download our free practice exam for the AWS Certified Solution Architect Professional Exam, which can also be used by the Solution Architect Associates and help them develop greater knowledge. And please, you can see that in the link below. And uh, please subscribe or join, if you desire, our Monday Certified Solution Architect Associate meetings. We provide meetings every Monday where it's a webinar I set up via Zoom and we invite people from all over the world to ask any questions on the AWS Certified Solution Architect exam and we answer them real time. So please join us for the free AWS Certified Solution Architect mentorship, our ebook, and if you're looking for a practice exam, we have that available for you too. Thank you so much for watching this video. We look forward to see you next Wednesday on the next video. And by the way, we hope to see you on next Monday's Zoom call where we answer any questions you may have. Thank you, take care, and be well.